Irving from Sports Illustrated. Uh, he, of course, is on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline, Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Chris, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time today. Uh, how surprised are you that the Kings sit in the three spot as we begin this uh, final stretch? Uh, I think you'd, you'd be lying if they said they weren't surprised. So you can count me in that group. Um, it's just been a really nice season for them so far, though. Uh, seemingly no one with the team, you know, counting the chickens before they're hatched as far as um, assuming this is a done deal. It's been too long in, in Sacramento for, you know, for anybody to make that assumption that it's locked in now. Um, and the Western Conference standings are really tight, but um, it's a team that has played, you know, some of the best offense in the league and a team that I think has had just enough in the closing moments with Fox and, and everybody else um, to, to really close the door on, on teams that were um, – in the you know close in the late stages of the game, so it's been really fun to watch. I think it's been good for the league to see a team that was so strong in the early 2000s and before that um, to kind of have a resurgence here. And I know it's obviously been really good for the, the fan base to to finally feel like the, their hope has been validated somewhat. There's a a parity in the NBA and especially in the Western Conference this year that we haven't seen in a long time. Do you think that's that's here to stay? Do you think that's something that, that will last? Or do you chalk this up to, to injuries and things kind of go back to normal of the haves and the have-nots? <laughs> well, uh, I think Phoenix probably has some thoughts about whether charity will exist for a long time <laughs> um, in light of the Kevin Durant trade. Uh, but, but look, I mean, yeah, it, it, I think this was kind of a league's utopia on some level. On the one hand, it is uh, that, you have so many teams bunched up. I mean, certainly around where the Kings are in the standings. But then when you scroll a little bit further down, too, if you look where the Warriors are and the Lakers are and Oklahoma City is and all those teams, there's so many teams bunched right there between, like, the ninth and the 12th, 13th place, all, all within two, three games. Minnesota, um, you know, Portland, you name it. So it, there's a lot of parity. Uh, I think I saw a statistic saying that this is the – kind of the, the smallest gap between the worst team and the best team net rating wise, just as far as how many points they score per 100 possessions and how many points they win by per 100 possessions that the Celtics are the least dominant team in the last 20 years could be the best team in the league at this point in the year. But um, it'll be interesting long-term despite the fact that I think the league wants that you've seen that with the draft lottery and then flattening the, the lottery odds. But Generally speaking, the league is at its strongest ratings-wise when there is a dominant team, when you have the Warriors, when you have the Bulls, when you have the Lakers with Kobe and Shaq. So it would be really interesting to see, like, you know, for the next few years to just see different teams winning titles, um, to see the standings be as flat as they are right now and really no team jumping out to a big, big uh, conference standings lead or anything like that. But, I, you know, I will say this. If that's going to be the case, I think it's wonderful that Sacramento is in the mix where they are and back in a playoff conversation. It's good for basketball. SI's Chris Herring is with us here on Cattles and Rami Sacktown Sports. Chris, you recently wrote uh, about the second half in a preview of the Western Conference, and one of your bigger questions was, you know, how will the uh, Kings fare against good competition? They mm -hmm. obviously are 11-17 and 17 against teams that are 500 or better. And looking at this stretch, the final 25, Chris, what are reasonable expectations, do you think, for this basketball team? I'll put it this way. I mean, if, if they can finish – anywhere near 500 uh, for, for these last 25. If that means um, 12 and 13, if that means 11 and 14, I think they're fine because they, they have done the work to get themselves ahead in the standing. They have a little bit of cushion. Now they probably won't finish in the three seed if that happens. But again, who went into the season thinking that the Kings would be a three seed? <laughs> right. Uh, you know, even recently, you know, I'm, I'm working on a longer term feature and, you know, a magazine feature about the Kings. Uh, hopefully in the next few weeks that will come out. Uh, I sat down with Monty McNair. He, you know, he still is just so focused on making the playoffs. It doesn't seem like it's about the seating for this team. I, certainly if you ask the fans there in Sacramento, it's just been so long since they've experienced the postseason. I don't think the point is the three seed it's the playoffs. So, um, you know, as long as they're still able to just not completely fall off the wagon here, uh, they should be fine. Uh, I, I do think it would require their defense to tighten up some, and there really haven't been <laughs> any firm indications that that's on the way. I mean, I know that they point to the fact that 
over the last couple months that their defense has been a little better than you know what it was at the very beginning of the season, but it's still not great. Um, they have some things that they do that they're good at. I think they're the best zone defense in the league statistically. They lit up very, very few fast break points and very few uh, transition opportunities, despite the fact that they play at one of the faster paces in the league. So there are things that they shut down and take away, but generally speaking, they're, they're not great at protecting the rim. Their bench is not particularly effective. Uh, so they probably would have to be a little bit better defensively to be at 500 or better than 500, given that they're going to play the second hardest schedule in the West the second half. Did you think they should have made a move at the trade deadline or because, as you just laid out, they're kind of playing with house money. It was smart to, to sit back and, and see where this thing falls. I, you know, I asked Monty about that too, and I, I was a little bit surprised they did not. It seemed like the backup big position was kind of uh, a spot that maybe they could have improved a little bit. Uh, Monta Sabonis, and when you look at their the amount of points they give up in the paint per game, kind of uh, would suggest that that Sabonis has not been very good defensively, and it's really actually not the case. He's been he's held um, opponents, I think, four or five percentage points lower than their average when he's defending the rim. It's really a function of, you know, the fact that they let guys into the lane a little bit too easily, guard, and that you know, their backup bigs have not been great at protecting the rim so far. So between that and Mike Brown kind of openly admitting that he's been searching for an answer off the bench at the big position, um, I thought they would do something. It is house money. I, I do believe Monty with what he told me, which is that he didn't ever want to part ways with an important piece of the team in order to upgrade one spot and kind of spot clean something. So I do understand that, but you know, uh, we will see. It, it, it gets very difficult to win in the playoffs when you don't have much defense, interior defense. Um, but that said, their starting lineup has been really, really good this year. One has played more minutes than any other starting five in the league, any other lineup in the league. And, you know, if, if there's one upside of that, it's that your starting lineups are going to play longer in the playoffs. Your stars are going to play longer than your bench guys in the playoffs. So I do understand the concept of not wanting to overdo it just to fix one aspect of your team. Um, and I also understand the idea of maybe wanting to see how your team looks on the first go round uh, in the playoffs before making a big decision that's going to impact your, your future line points. So I understand both sides of it, and I think that they're in a pretty good spot regardless. Last one for you, Chris. And again, thanks for the time. Uh, we look at the Warriors, obviously, they've been banged up. Uh, age is starting to climb on this team. You get the Bob Myers stuff, the contract situation, rumblings of Steve Kerr. Does this feel like this could be the Warriors' last dance, so to speak? No, I don't think that. I mean, I, I'd be a little bit surprised. Like, I understand the Bob Myers question, and I think it's fair. Um, only he can answer that, and the Warriors organization can answer that. But as long as Steph is there, and I think as long as you keep the core there, Clay, um, Draymond, I think is obviously a big question after this season. But I kind of feel like Draymond, you know, is a very, very valuable player. There's no team that he would have more value to than with Golden State, just given the relationship he has on court, off court with Steph. Um, as long as you have a couple of those core pieces there, and obviously Jordan Poole is locked in as well. No, I don't see it as a last dance situation. I, I imagine Steve Kerr would probably be back too. Who knows? Bob Myers might be the glue that holds it all together. And if he leaves, maybe it's a completely different scenario. But, you know, I would take my chances with any solid GM, decent GM, being able to figure out a recipe in which if Steph Curry is healthy, this team is a real contender. And so I don't think that aspect of it changes, even if it's Bob Myers. If Steve Kerr were to leave, you know, I think it would be a, a, another hit as well. But, you know, I, I still would trust that Steph plus some of the right pieces gives you a contender. All right, Chris, man. Thanks again. We appreciate your time. Great stuff. And hopefully we get to do this again soon. Sounds good, guys. Take care. You too. There goes Chris Herring from Sports Illustrated. He is NBA senior writer for SI. He was on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop.